Hello, welcome everyone to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today we are going to be cyber safe with the help of Mike Smith and his team. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for this because literally I, I have two young daughters and you know I, I've given them iPads and, and, I, and I find myself like looking over their shoulders literally every few minutes going, what, what, what are you looking at? How, how, did, how did you get to that site? I, I put in guards. So, you know, I'm open to any advice you're willing to give. <laughs> Super, so, yeah. <laughs> without further ado, over to you, Mike. Thank you very much. Just give me a second. I'll just share the screen here and audio. And from the beginning, there we go. Can everyone see that? Yes. And I'm keeping my camera on. Okay, okay, so welcome everyone. Thanks very much for the invite today. I, I'm, I'm Mike Smith. With me, we have colleagues uh, Farouk and Gordon from our Cybercrime Protect. Now, we sit under harm prevention within Police Scotland, so there's a number of areas, and two of the areas that we work in are uh, cybercrime prevention and internet safety. So we have our business side with cybercrime prevention uh, and our uh, internet safety for young people. This is essentially more going to be touching on just sort of general uh, internet safety uh, and cybercrime. Uh, Kenji has already mentioned young people. There's not a lot of young people content in this, but we're more than happy to discuss it. I worked in a school for two years as well, and I have two uh, teenage children, so I'm essentially an expert from, from, from their teenage years onwards and dealing with all the, the problems that that brings with it. So uh, you can ask questions throughout, please. Uh, you'll just see how it's flowing, and then we can, you can ask or your hand up or, or maybe leave it till the end if you've got something that you don't want recorded. So I'll move on. We're just going to touch on a few things. We're going to touch essentially on social media and the digital footprint about passwords and just some general online safety tips. And there is the mention of young people here as well at this section. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll, you'll be able to, to answer a few of these questions. You'll be able to feel a bit more confident and, and, uh, and, and just, just, just being online and essentially when there's young people as well, I know what Kenji's saying, sometimes you, you, you jump onto the history of a computer or you, you jump onto a computer that's on and you're absolutely appalled by it. So, uh, and then you've got gaming, you add gaming into the mix. My son's a gamer and it's just, they, they, they are on so much and, and downloading so much. So just to highlight that the, the information I'm giving you here is completely non-technical, okay? The stuff that we talk about is stuff that you will have heard about in the papers, you will have read about, it's been on the radio, there will have been warnings about some platforms and other things that uh, you don't know what young people are on, or, or just, just general safety information. We work with our cyber operations teams and we get highlighted some of the crimes that have taken place or some of the incidents and COVID, et cetera, has had a, a huge big scams element to it. But behind a lot of these things is absolute simple messaging. It is probably about far too much information on your social media profile or you're saying where you work. So we take these crimes and we kind of break them down and say, listen, what is this? And it might be a, it might be a huge fraud that's taken place at an organization. And essentially it started off as, as just a simple phishing scam. So we, we, we try and take the take the nuts and bolts and the zeros and the, and the numbers out of it and then just figure out just what it is that's, that's taken place. So I'm going to start off with a short clip. You should have audio on this. And I think this summarizes just exactly where we are in terms of social media. And I know that a lot of you will recognize this. Uh, we'll probably fall in foul of this and we'll probably do it as well. So I'll move on to, to a short clip. Uh, see if you recognize this. Chocolate. What's the name? Uh, Joel. What was the name? Alex. Alex. Thank there you, you go, Johnny. Cheers. If you like our Facebook page, we give you a free hot drink and a free pastry. We have a new like for Damien. We have a new like for Damien. Hey, Carl, are you standing by? Standing by. Hi there, can I help? Yeah, I just uh, liked your Facebook page. Okay, I'll search Facebook I'm now. I'm searching Google. I have a phone number. <laughs> I've got his email address. Okay, Carly, are you ready for information on Damien? Yeah, yep, I am. Mother's maiden name is He banks with Hey, Carly, this is the girl coming in now with the blue scarf. What's her name? Nicholas. Nicholas. His date is birth, 7th May. She lives at 38A. Just be a couple of seconds. Two children, her age, four, and Previous address, she's on the phone code. Yep, got it. Damien, age yeah. 26 and a fitness instructor. How do you know what that? Where did you go to UCL? Martin, I went to South Thames College. Assistant psychologist at Great Ormond Street. How did you know? <laughs> 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 I don't even know. Huh? Better? 
You know I'm a Christian as well. Oh, yeah, we know everything about you, Martin. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Anna, from Russia. I absolutely love that clip, especially when she says, we'd with and about you, Martin. Now, they have done so little digging. All they've just done is looked on uh, social media. Uh, and this is all information that we are giving away freely. And it's that it's almost that kind of box mentality where well, there's a box to fill it in, so we better, we better fill it in. And also, we better be honest. And I've got an angle on that as well. But uh, so just from that clip there, and this is just someone who has liked a Facebook page for a cafe. So it's not even that important. They've got their full name occupation. They've got all that information there. They've got their mother, mother's maiden name and also banking. And some of this also, uh, when you're registering your Facebook or you're registering for social media, yes, you'd ask for some of that information. I find that a lot of information where there's, where there, where there's uh, it comes from uh, complaining as well. So just one thing to think about is if you're complaining about Santander Bank, then I know that you bank with Santander. If, I, if, you, if you're complaining about the fact that you, 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 your flight was cancelled, then I know that you've been on a flight with, with British Airways, etc. So when you're putting this information out there, just take that second. There's a, there's a campaign called Take Five, which is essentially when you get like a phishing email or you get asked to do something. I think you should take five the minute you get to anything whatsoever and just say, what is this site that I'm signing up for? And does it really need all this information? Uh, when it comes to young people signing up for social media accounts, I know we've got that age restriction and do you let them use it? And they've got to be 13 and stuff. Uh, I also, also think that there's... there's uh, trying to shield young people from, from being online or putting too much information on it is, is to maybe use uh, shorter versions of their name. So if it's, so if it's, if it's Martin Smith, you can maybe put Marty or something like this and just be a wee bit clever or just have it as Smith or something like this. Just be a wee bit clever when you're dealing with young people because their, their, their privacy and personal life is, is, is probably, a, a, there might be a chance of clawing it back. Probably everyone here we've filled in more forms and, and tried out social media platforms for the last X amount. I was actually having a look back to see what it was that I signed up for and saw that ICQ was first introduced in 1996. And I think I tried just about every social media platform thereafter without taking cognizance of this information here. So there is loads and loads of stuff that we've been filling in. But it's maybe just time to, to, to double check and just make sure that the information that you are currently putting out there is the information that you're happy with other people knowing. And as I say, complaining is another angle whereby you give a lot of information away sometimes when you're just having a rant. So just be careful with the information you put out. And uh, and, and when you get a, a, every now and again, it might be three months or six months, you might get a prompt from Facebook, or you might get a prompt from Instagram to review your privacy policy or to review their privacy policy or double check your, your details. Now, this would normally suggest that there has been a change in the way that they are doing something. Uh, and it is definitely a time to make sure that the tick box that you put down for, uh, you know, do not show my email address is still ticked. So if you get a prompt from any of the large social media platforms to double check something, then please make sure that you do go through it and utilize their, their uh, uh, privacy policy and privacy settings as much as, you, as much as you can, rather than play hindsight and go back and say, God, I didn't realize this was shown. And, and, and also, if you are getting your young people and kids onto it, then just take even more time when you're filling, uh, filling in social media profiles. But I mean, there you go, there's a clip there. There was no secret squirrel stuff done. This was just open source, people just double checking things. And you know what it's like as well, if you've got a uh, maybe a maybe a, a group in your village or town, or maybe it's a, a group you're in a community group. Every now and then it's dead easy to all of a sudden get sort of way laid. You click on someone's profile before you know it, you're you're four people away. But this is open source stuff, and it's information that that you you people as users are 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 allowing us to to check. So I don't mean us in police; I mean just the general public. So. There's one thing as well that we're into the 17th of November at the minute, and shopping online is is uh, going to be going OTT. People will be going mad for it. And I know some of the big, big platforms like your Amazons, et cetera, and stuff like this are set to make an awful lot of money. But there's a lot of social media virtual Christmas markets popping up at the minute. Uh, in my area alone, we've got three that I've joined. So these are small businesses 
or uh, even even just small sole traders making jewelry, etc., that are jumping onto these social media Christmas markets. A lot of them done on Facebook. So just like anything, again, it's just uh, making sure that uh, you're not falling for scams. That the, the the people that are selling this stuff are legitimate. If you're getting asked to send any money via Amazon vouchers or iTunes vouchers, if you're getting asked to send money via bank transfer, then just ask if you can you can uh, send using PayPal or something that's slightly more secure. But it's just a heads up. I've not heard anything in relation to these virtual Christmas markets. I think they're a great way of supporting small businesses locally, but there, there could be pitfalls with them as well. Uh, and also shopping online just on legitimate sites and normal sites. If you take your Amazons away, there are thousands and thousands of really, really nice shops that you can go and shop at. But I think you just got to consider once again, going back to the, the Facebook scenario is what information do they actually need? Uh, and if they have a guest option to check out, if you know that you're only going to be using this once, this site once or twice a year, then just even consider checking out as a guest uh, or alternatively, and this might sound a bit odd, is do you really need to put your own information into it? I use a whole, load of, uh, a whole load of different details when I'm shopping online. And I've never once not received anything. The shop that you're buying from doesn't give a monkey's what your name is or what your date of birth is. All they want to know is that they're going to get your credit card information at the end of it and that it's going to tie in, okay? Uh, you just need to let your postman know that you've, uh, you might be using a different name. But yeah, I would consider... If you're using, if it's not an account, if it's not an account-based shop that you're doing, then just, yeah, just have a think, be a bit clever, maybe even come up with a name, or as I say earlier on, maybe shorten part of your name, even just use your initial when you're putting some information in or check out completely as a guest. So uh, I know it's that box scenario, it's a tick box scenario again, and, and there's a box in front, it's asking for my date of birth. And if you are going to start putting your date of birth in again, it might be time to, to, to think about being a bit clever, and, but make sure you remember what it was. But please use the checkout as a guest option. I would say that's a, a, a secure way of doing it and minimize with, with just letters your, your, your name. I see that there's a few things popping up here. Is there any questions relevant in relation to what we're, we're on at the minute? Or... No. Mike, I've just, uh, just to add, um... Jamie um, has just said about his local neighbourhood watch, um, saying that people will uh, be on the Facebook groups um, and regularly breach other people's security without the permission, such as the neighbours talking about others being on holiday or people putting pictures of uh, misdelivered mail onto the groups uh, so others can see your addresses. And also Andrew has just said about um, his local neighbourhood group in his area, um, to join this group, you have to send proof of address to one of the moderators, uh, which he doesn't uh, agree to doing. Uh, rightfully so. I suppose that so. falls down to the rules of the group. If uh, it does sound slightly odd that uh, you can't be, uh, you can't just be okayed by someone who's maybe already in the group. I, I, I mean, I live in a small, uh, a small area, and, and there is a, a local group, and uh, they often do find things, and there's credit cards found or there's mail that's gone wrong. Hopefully we're at a stage now where the users, and I know that this always happens, or 99% of the time happens if there's something found, is they usually score it out or they scribble it out or they cover it up with their thumb so there's no information, or they'll just ask if they know where Mike Smith might stay. So rather than putting the whole information on, that's down to users and that's essentially down to, to you guys spreading this information and saying, I know you don't want to pull someone up publicly on a Facebook page and say, why did you put the full credit card details on there? But yeah, there's maybe a nudge or a quick message to be sent there, but uh, yeah, it's a, a Facebook group, as everyone here knows, is only as secure as, as, as the people that are in it. Uh, and if that is going to happen, uh, I, obviously, if people are away on holiday, we wouldn't expect anyone to be posting, uh, can't wait for to get away from this, this horrible weather for the next two weeks. Uh, if they do, then, uh, yeah, just look out for them then. But, yeah, careful. I mean, yeah, your Facebook groups and your social media groups are, are as secure as your... Uh, uh, is everyone that's within it. Anything else there, Farouk? Uh, no, someone just asked about when's Black Friday, and that's uh, the upcoming Friday. Um, although it's been more or less the last the whole month, uh, a lot of uh, websites have been advertising things over the month. So yeah, I think it's Black it's Friday no week is now the term, isn't it? Yeah, from the 22nd onward, Black Friday yeah. week, so on Cyber Monday next week. So yeah, you can test out your uh, checking out as a guest on Cyber Monday and see how you get on with that. Uh, but yeah, just some Michael, shopping just advice. Going to, 
I was just going oh, to yeah. add about methods of payment as well. Um, in terms of um, if, for example, you're paying online on PayPal and you go through the right means, then you've got a recourse to uh, reclaim that back if you don't get the item that you ordered. Um, whereas some sellers might say to you, well, could you do the friends and family option and, uh, you know, just send me the money directly and I'll post the item out and then you never see it again. Um, same as around Christmas, um, you know, there might be the odd toy that you can't get a stock of. I mean, it's um, more likely people will actually order items online earlier this, this time around. But um, if it's the last uh, PlayStation 5 or Xbox left out, then, you know, you might um, make a payment online to someone on uh, on some uh, advertising platform and, and then not see your money again. Uh, so we'll be cautious of payment methods as well. Yeah, I think there's going to be a big push over the next two weeks, Thanks. or the next few weeks, especially for Xbox, uh, for PS5s and Xboxes as the, the demand goes. I know that they've publicly, they came out in, in mainstream media to say that there was, a, there was a whole new X amount of thousands were getting delivered across the globe, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So if anyone's got any other questions in relation to, to shopping online, then, then please ask us uh, or we can chat afterwards. But I'll move on just now. Meantime, we wanted someone in passwords and uh, a bit of a change in the last few years in terms of uh, it was used to be just a, a normal word such as, uh, you know, Ellie, there's your dog's name there with just a number at the end of it or where you stayed and you added in whatever or, or a name and zero. But there has been a huge push just towards length of passwords and it's as simple as that. Whether or not you've got a gobbledygook one at the top there, the top right, or you've got passphrase as in the second one, or sometimes if your website doesn't allow you to put spaces in, then you can always just uh, put them all together. But uh, there's a real push, and we would advise, as does the NCSC, to, to, get, your, to get your passwords as, as long as possible. And one thing as well is uh, one password, one site. Please don't be re reusing passwords across multiple sites. And all it takes is, uh, for example, we've just been talking about shopping there. If it is a website that you've not used that often and you've used your number one or number two password uh, and it might not have been as secure i mean it doesn't even be a smaller business there have been huge data breaches for for big businesses as well but so please don't reuse passwords and i know that the ability to save any passwords such as the first one especially and the well in fact any one of these is uh, there's no way you, oh sorry just to tuck before i go into password managers additional security questions i've got a big bugbear about additional security questions they are without a doubt probably far more personal then the information that is actually your password, you're giving away a whole load of information. So this is where it's maybe time to be creative and, and, and consider uh, maybe even, and I use the word false here, uh, but I, I, what I just mean is just, yeah, just being creative, okay? Uh, none of this information really needs to be correct. It once again, as a tick box, it, all they need is to fill in. Just make sure you record it, whether or not you're writing it down or whether or not you're using a password manager, et cetera. But please be careful about putting in quite so much information. Uh, if you couple this with uh, just losing your password, I mean, these are often used to recover your password. Uh, so yeah, but it is a lot of information should the site get hacked or should there be a problem with it. So my dad actually went to go and book a, a restaurant and got offered just a restaurant card. You know, you get 10% off and I've never seen so much private information that was asked in relation to this. And I know that some of these businesses, what they like to do is once you've ticked the box to say you're happy for them to be contacted by them, it means that because they've got your date of birth, they'll send you a 10% off deal or an additional deal, or they might even send you a daft birthday card or a birthday message text. Uh, if you can do without your daft text, then please consider uh, putting in some different information here, okay? So, uh, have we got any questions on that? And I know, as I say, putting in different information, but as I said, they, you could actually you could even put in numbers for this. These are just boxes that need some content in them. So be creative and uh, yeah, put a bit of thought into this. You can check your passwords that you're currently using at the minute uh, by going into how secures my password. There's also one that I've been using more often uh, called my one login, just to double check things. Where you can. Uh, uh, it's a wee bit more up to date in terms of the time. I know that you put a password in the house, here's my password, something can say four months and my one login will say a few weeks. So if you just want to double check some of the passwords you're doing, however, if you're going by the advice that we've just been talking about with one password word site and you use a passphrase, you won't really need to double check them, but you can do that. And you can see that if you put uh, even just three simple words in there with a comma in it as well, it, uh, it should be fairly secure. Things are flashing up in front of me here. I don't know if it's questions or 
timers or what? So it's just one of the. Uh, yeah, Andrew just said that um, their institution has blocked dictionary words, even if it's a longer st string for students. Um, and so, sorry, Gordon's just added about using three random words um, as per NCSE guidance, as you've just said. Yeah, uh, I, I've I use a, I'm, I've just started using them. My, my wife has set up a project and we've, uh, in order to try and keep things uh, just as as to get things set up as quick as possible, we did just use the, the browser facility within Firefox and the password facility, and it's actually worked okay. I would I prefer to use a password manager. But it does show that uh, uh, the, the bigger companies are moving towards uh, security. Uh, Farouk, you're an Apple user, and so you're you were saying that you're pushed to remind you of passwords you've already used, or yeah, I mean one of the recommend uh, one of the suggestions that you get on um, iOS devices, and you get them on Android as well uh, with with the updates now. Um, is it suggests a uh, complex password, um, which is usually about um, 21 characters, um, which is strings of letters, numbers, etc. And then, then um, if you select that password, it saves it into your what Apple call keychain um, and is shared across your devices. Um, but one of the things I've seen recently is a bit like that, that website that you just say, shared, uh, where you can go and check if your password's been a part of a breach. Um, when you go into your passwords on your phone, it will actually list the passwords now um, that are things that have been part of a breach. And it will also suggest that certain passwords might be too easy to guess. Um, and like Mike was saying there about covering uh, that those three random words you take would take you 10 billion years to um, overcome. Well, as computers get faster and faster and they can crunch a lot more numbers, um, it's uh, quicker for computers to act for someone to... Um, what was called a brute force attack um, and uh, basically try a different combination um, and with faster computers they can do it quicker but with three random words it's still most recommended um, however it will suggest to you to change your password so if you if you have an ios device you can look at your password list and you will see recommendations if you put the latest software which ones you should change probably won't be long before we're moving to four random words or five random words, given computer power moving up and up. I, I mean, I've got mine set to six, so uh, computers. So as I said there, pass, so there's obviously saving in the browser option. There's also password managers. There's three, the sort of mainstream ones there. One thing that I've noticed is sometimes nowadays, yeah, your internet provider will offer you a password manager or your antivirus will offer you password manager options. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can get these free as I see, even banks now providing these. Just very quickly, we touched on this earlier on in relation to two-factor authentication. I'm aware of the time, it's 26 minutes past here, okay? So as uh, we would promote the use of uh, two-factor authentication whenever we can. If you are one of these people that uh, does just like to use the same password or very, very similar ones just with a number change at the end, at least if you're using two-factor authentication, which essentially just means that you're going to get a short six-digit code sent to your, usually six-digit code sent to your phone just to authenticate it. At least if your password is breached, then uh, you, they won't get passed without the codes. So we would definitely push the use of two-factor authentication. Now, have I been pawned was just mentioned there. One thing that you might not know about is have I been pawned passwords, which is a reverse search. So rather than just searching on your email address, as you can actually search on the password. And that's essentially the same service that Farouk was just mentioning there on this Apple device there. So it's actually coming up and saying, listen, this has been part of a breach. Uh, and it's been breached 2,000 times, whatever. So this is time for you to maybe even go to your password manager, which usually will create a password for you, and you can double-check it against here. The chances are if it's a six-random word password, it won't appear on Have I Been Pawned. But it's definitely worth uh, jumping on Have I Been Pawned and having a quick look to see if you've been the victim of a breach at any point. Well, not you being the victim of a breach, but if your account has been breached at any point. Just going to lastly touch on... Uh, information that you might not even know that you're giving away. And this is just in terms, some, I've only just picked permissions here on phones. But if you look on the left-hand side, you've got the uh, iOS device there. And just on location services alone, now you would expect to probably find my iPad, but there's Twitter is grabbing the location, Safari, Google Maps, that's an obvious one. But you've also got the news module called, uh, news app called Flipboard, and you've also got Evernote that is uh, grabbing this 
location where this phone is. And on the right hand side as well, there's some other ones there that people might not always do. And this is, I call this a spring clean time. It's now and again, just to go into your apps and go into your permissions and just say, hold on a second, what is it again that I've, you know, because you're loading up apps all the time, just to go in, have a quick check. Say, God, I didn't even realize that Flipboard was accessing where I was, okay? So, and you can you can uncheck them. Don't expect your Google Maps to work very well without your location on, but uh, apart from the others, you should be uh, should be okay. But yeah, it's, and, and lastly, it's entirely up to you what you want to share. But, uh, but yeah, just, just, just have a double check now and again. So we're onto the summary section now with one and a half minutes to go. I've already touched on a lot of these, being creative in terms of signing up. Do you want to use your real name? Uh, yeah, the date of birth one, I would never ever use my real date of birth. That's entirely up to you, but you might want to change it round or just change some numbers round, but make sure you record it and make sure you remember it because I have fallen foul of that when someone's phoned up and I've confirmed my date of birth and it was one of my, it was probably my real one that I used there. So uh, passwords, again, we've just touched on that. For those of you working in police or working with young people, et cetera, uh, especially teachers, and I did a presentation to youth workers who agreed with this entirely, is just be careful of the images and the profile pictures that you're putting online. Uh, if you're a teacher or a youth worker, 100% young people will try and find you online, okay? And if you've got pictures of your stag do or, or a party that you went to, then just consider that they'll have access to that as well, okay? Uh, we would promote the use of paid for software. It usually provides a slightly more higher level of security uh, than some of the free ones. Uh, and in terms of going back to youth workers and teachers and, and, and young people, if you if you're really don't know how to use an app, then probably a young person will be able to show you around it in about 30 seconds rather than uh, reading up on it and learning about it. Kids can work their way around these things really easily. Uh, if you have kids, I'd be asking them if they're okay to post pictures of them. I have some friends who are serial posters of young people. Uh, I would get an absolute doing of my daughter if I posted a picture of her without asking her. So there are different levels of acceptance. She doesn't like it, but just make sure that they are happy if you're out for the day that they're happy with you posting pictures. Uh, and lastly, the one that's hidden behind the group there is to make sure that you keep your devices up to date. There is an auto update facility on most of them. Sometimes it can be a bit slow, even on Windows and on Android, the ones I use. So maybe even just give it a quick nudge now and again and just double check that the, uh, they're updating. Wow, that was, a, that was a quick last minute and a half there, two minutes. Does anyone have any questions on this recorded bit or are you happy with that? Yeah, Mike, just a couple of questions that were asked about um, someone saying that they never select the save passwords option when they're prompted, and are we saying it's okay to save them? It's okay to save them in, uh, if it's a, a mainstream uh, browser that you're using and that you're securing it with a password itself uh, or securing it with an account, with a good password for an account. It, the same option comes up on the browsers that I use, but I'm using a password manager I say the one that was set up on the, another computer in the house here, we are saving passwords to that. So uh, your browser and your security is only as good as your last update as well. So to make sure that your browser and your software is up to date, as I touched on in the last point there. So uh, keeping not just your operating system, but the software on it as well uh, up to date is as important. And Kenji's asked about password managers that should we use the one built into the browser or should we use the one like dedicated applications like LastPass? Uh, the browser, uh, the NCSC guidance is that the browser passwords are as uh, secure as private ones. They don't offer as much services. Uh, what the one that I use, you can share. You can share loads of different additional sections. You can save credit cards. Uh, the question that normally comes up when I ask mention password managers is how can we trust the password manager? Uh, and I think there comes a point where we have to trust some of the bigger companies, or, or we don't have to trust them, but we do trust them. We've, we've put our faith in Google and, and Apple. And everyone seems to buy them without asking any questions. So uh, there are some bigger companies that uh, do lead on password managers, and, and I've had no problems with them and not had any bad feedback about them. Sometimes they can be, what some of them are a bit more complicated than other ones, but that's just usually you've got a 14-day trial or a seven-day trial, so you could play about with it for 14 days, and if it's not for you, then just, just try a different one. Okay, so um, we're almost just coming to the the, the end of this uh, recorded part of the session. Probably have time for at least one more question. I should point out that I have been 29 
for such a long time. Every time I get asked for a date of birth, I, I just get tempted to maybe shave a year or two off each time. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have a, a final question before we end for this recorded session? If not, I, I just want to go back to um, payment methods one more time. Um, and I noticed reading through Gumtree um, and uh, for suggestions of how, how people should pay for, for goods, uh, being offered through the platform, they suggested um, bank transfer was perhaps one of the the safest methods. Oddly enough, um, beyond PayPal, and that was simply because for PayPal, there's recently been a, uh, a series of scams whereby if you if you sell something via and the person pays via PayPal, the person who's bought your item can claim that it never arrived right. and then instigate a return for you. So that they said that it's essentially, it's more secure to just give them your account number and your bank sort code, get them to transfer the funds, make sure the funds have arrived and then hand over the goods. Did, did you have any comments around that? I suppose it's in relation to the banking protocol for the particular bank and, and how easy it is you think you're going to be able to make a claim against them if there is fraudulent uh, activity. I, I think we promote PayPal a lot of the time because there is, uh, they are very consumer uh, related. They, they are very good at, at making claims. I suppose that what you're highlighting there is it's the person who said they didn't get the, that's making the claim. So they're, they're, there's the problem, yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a perfect payment option. I mean, it's always been the case when you're when you're a, when you're a, an individual seller, be it on eBay. There's always that. How do I know? Do I think I'm going to get my stuff? And I think it comes back to if we take eBay for example, down to feedback. Uh, I think on Gumtree you can leave a review of the seller, etc. As, as well. So, yeah, and also a bit of gut instinct as well. Is something either too cheap or are they uh, just? Uh, uh, not the photos of the item, but they're just stock images that are used. So just a few, a few telling tales before you, before you, well, in fact, before you buy that Xbox Five. Yeah, be be very, very careful. Good advice as oh, we PS5. come to our. <laughs> Xbox five, Good advice. What talking about. <laughs> I'll, I, I could sell you one if you like. I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, well, um, that brings us to the end of this session for this recorded part. We'll stay on for a bit of a chat, but if you're able to join us for some future session, we'd love to see you there. Um, my thanks to uh, Mike and Farouk and uh, the team uh, for sharing their expertise with us. And until we see you again, stay safe. <laughs>